Previously, we looked at how we can use UI view controller representable to wrap a UI kit view controller. In particular, we looked at PH picker view controller so we can load pictures into Swift UI. However, we had a problem. If we run our app back, you'll see there's a big button saying go ahead and select an image, but we can't respond to the user pressing on the, the waterfall or the leaves or whatever you want to, or even pressing cancel. None of it works. Now, SwiftUI's solution here is called Coordinators, which is a bit of a confusing name for folks coming from a pure UIKit background, because UIKit had this whole other pattern called Coordinators from a chap called Suresh Kanlu, and it performed an entirely different role. To be clear, if you have come from UIKit and you know what Coordinators are in UIKit, SwiftUI's Coordinators are nothing like that. They are nothing like that at all. If you've used them before, please just Jettison them from your brain right now to avoid confusion. Instead, SwiftUI's coordinators are designed to act as delegates for things like our view controller right here. Now remember, delegates are objects that respond to events that happen elsewhere. In our case, tapping on stuff. For example, UIKit lets us attach an object to text field to you. So when the user uh, types anything in the text field, we can respond to that saying, what do they type? Do you want to change it? Do you want to submit it? Whenever you want to. Um, and it means that UIKit developers could modify the way the text field behaved without having to make a whole custom text field class of their own. Now, using these things in SwiftUI requires you to learn a little bit more about how UIKit works, which is no surprise given that we are literally bringing in these UI view controllers and similar into our SwiftUI world. And so to demonstrate this, we're gonna upgrade our image picker struct here so it can report back to SwiftUI when the user chooses an image or presses cancel. So here's the code we have right now. We've got make view controller and update view controller and nothing else right now. And we'll take this step by step because there's a lot of concepts to take in here. Don't feel bad. It takes you time to understand because coordinators really aren't easy the first time you meet them. First things first, I want to add a nested class inside Image Picker right here. I'm going to say there's a class called Coordinator right here. And it does need to be a class, as you'll see in a moment. It doesn't need to be nested. You could put that outside if you wanted to, it's fine. But I think encapsulating it neatly inside the thing it works with is a very, very good idea. Um, particularly if you have lots of these UI view controller representable types around, it'd be confusing. So having it inside the struct makes a big difference. So even though this thing here is inside our image picker struct, Swift won't just magically use it for the views coordinator, right? Instead, we've got to add a new method that's complaining right now called make coordinator, which Swift UI will automatically call when it's implemented, when this thing exists. All it's got to do is create and configure one of these new coordinator class instances and send it back to be used. Now, right now, our coordinator class is simple. Nothing special there at all. And so we're going to send one back straight from our struct. We'll say, make coordinator down here and just say, make a new coordinator and send it back. That's it. Okay, no configuration, no futzing, nothing. And of course, the code compiles cleanly now because SwiftUI is happy again. And what we're doing here really is we're making this image picker uh, struct that knows how to make a PH picker view controller. And now we've told image picker that by the way, it should handle communication with that view controller in SwiftUI, the, the bridge there using our coordinator class. That's the coordinator that talks between those two worlds, the UI kit and SwiftUI. The next step is to tell our PH picker view controller that when something happens, selecting a picture, pressing cancel, it should tell a coordinator, tell our coordinator what happened. It takes just one line of code inside make UI view controller. So directly before return picker, you want to say picker.delegate is our context.coordinator. That code will not compile, but that's fine. Just for a moment, I wanna pause and explain what's really happening here really dig into it a little bit. We don't call make coordinator ourselves, right? SwiftUI so will automatically call it when it makes an instance of our image picker struct. And even better, it will send in the coordinator for us in this context for us, right? It knows when I call make UI view controller, that context will already have a coordinator already created. Use this make coordinator thing down here. 
already made, ready to go. It'll pass it on to us and say, what do you want to do? And it'll come back here as well inside the update thing, if you ever want to have that as well. Here's your coordinator. What do you want to do? How do you want to communicate change to Swift UI or to uh, UIKit either way? So the line of code we just wrote right here says to Swift to use this coordinator class we just got made as a delegate for our PH picker view controller, which means anything that happens inside that picker UI, which is a whole sheet. So tapping an image or pressing cancel, it'll report that action onto our coordinator. Now, the reason it won't compile is because Swift's checking. It's saying, does our coordinator have the knowledge to behave as a delegate for a PH picker view controller? Can it do that? And the answer is no. We haven't made it the right kind of class just yet. And so it's refusing to build our project. It's being safe. It's saying this thing cannot be the delegate for it. it this thing it doesn't know how to be a PH picker view controller delegate. To fix this, we've got to make two changes to our coordinator class here. One is to make it inherit from NS object. And one is to make it conform to a new protocol called PH picker view controller delegate. That one there. So we have really three things happening here, not just two. Um, first, we've made it inherit from NS object, which is what's called the, the, the base class, the parent class of all of the uh, UI kit hierarchy. So all UI view controllers ultimately come from NS object. All UI views ultimately come from NS object. It's the, it's, it's the behind the scenes, really, it's uh, objective C allowing us to talk to it at runtime, to, to query it and send messages to it is all done by this class here, NS object. Um, and in this instance, it means the picker can say, uh, hey, the user chose an image, what do you want to do? At runtime, we can query uh, what's called a selector and say, hey, are you working or not? Anyway, um, it then makes this coordinator class conform to the PH picker view controller delegate. Uh, which is what adds functionality for detecting when the user chose an image. Um, now, NS object, that inheritance allows Objective C, the Objective C runtime behind the scenes, to check for the functionality. Do you support this functionality? The delegate is what actually requires it. It actually provides that functionality to us inside the class coordinator. Uh, and subtly, the third thing it does is make our code not compile in entirely different ways than it did before. Um, because we're now saying, yes, we conform to the delegate, which means this code down here is technically allowed, but we haven't actually made it conform to the delegate because there is one method that's required to implement inside here uh, that is, is will make it work correctly. We haven't done that yet. But now at least you can see why we had up a class, the coordinator. This thing has to, inherit from NS object. It's required for the Objective C runtime, which is what all of Photos UI and UI kits are built on, uh, in order for Objective C to query our coordinator to see what functionality it supports. Bang, gotta be a class, gotta conform, uh, inherit from NS object. Whew. At this point, we now have our image picker struct that wraps a PH picker view controller, and we can configure that view controller to talk to our coordinator class when something interesting happens to tell us what's changed, what do you want to do? The last step is to implement the one required method from PH picker view controller delegate, which will be called when the user's finished making their selection. Now that might mean we have an image. They've chosen one or they've pressed cancel. So it's down to us to respond appropriately to both those options. Now, if we just park UI kit temporarily, right? Just forget it. Think about it in terms of pure functionality here. What we want is for our image picker to report back that image to whatever used the picker in the first place. Like we're going to present this thing from Swift UI. In our case, our current content viewer has a sheet with the image picker inside. We want that to be given whatever image was selected and then dismiss the sheet. So you can go back to the original view. What we need here is Swift UI's at binding property wrapper, which allows us to create a binding. Come on, nose. Come on. Poor hungry dog. Obviously likes a UI kit. <clears throat> Come on. Good girl. Yeah. Where was I? Delegates. 
Bindings, yes, bindings. We want to use 50 wires at binding property wrapper because uh, it means we can set an image inside this image picker struct and have it actually update a value in a different Swift UI view, in our content view, for example, where it'll show up on the screen. And so we'll start off by adding a new binding to here. We'll say add binding, binding, var image is an optional UI image. Now remember, it's a UI image, right? This thing has to have the raw pixel data behind it. So we can then modify that with core image and the filters we want to use. You hungry? Desperate? Desperately hungry? Oh, it's hard being a dog. It's hard. Okay, now we've added that property um, inside our image picker. We've got to now access that inside our coordinator. Now it's a nested class. Does it mean it gets all the properties of its parent struct instance? It doesn't get those at all. We've got to pass those into there because that's the thing, this coordinator, that will be informed when an image was select. <laughs> don't, don't throw up bits of treat, please. Come on, Luna, you can have one too. Good girl. Yeah, you're a good dog too. There you go. <laughs> um, so our coordinator gets told, hey, an image has been chosen. What do you want to do? But the struct image picker that created the coordinator, that's the one that has the binding. And so rather than just pass the data down one level, a better idea is to tell our coordinator uh, how its parent exists. Like you've got a parent, by the way, and it's an image picker, what do you want to do with it? And so we can actually add a property inside here that points to our parent image picker. We can say this has a parent image picker here, and we'll initialize this thing with a parent image picker and do self.parent equals that parent. So when we create our coordinator, all we're gonna do is pass in our self so we can refer back to it later on. So down here in our coordinator, we'll just say coordinator with self. So pass in our image picker struct with the binding into the class so we can modify the binding from there. Now, at this point, we've got, I know, I see you, dog, I see you. At this point, we've got everything we need to actually read the response from our ph picker view controller which is done by implementing a method with a very very specific name and it will look for this inside our coordinator class if you remember in here um because that's delegate of the image picker that's the ph picker view controller delegate thing that's the one that's got to have the right method name it's a very precise method name xco can autocomplete for you it's called did finish picking um but also you can just press this little hex gun up here, then press fix like that. Um, I prefer the autocomplete solution because this pastes it above my properties and initializer, which is like, like no, no, thank you very much. How much you go below those things? That's a, the sensible place for it. Anyway, that's our method stuff. Did finish picking with some results. And this receives two objects we care about. One is the PH picker view controller that was given the user the option in the first place, the images or the cancel button, uh, plus, an array of their results. So here's the results, what do you wanna do? Uh, it's results as an array because you can actually make this thing have multiple images being imported if you want to. Uh, and in here, it's our job to do three things. First, to tell this picker, okay, we're done now, dismiss yourself, go away, animate away, please, we're done. Second, <laughs> exit if the user made no selection. So if results is empty, it means they have to cancel, we can't handle that just do nothing at all, leave the image as it was. Otherwise, we want to go in and grab the results and look for a UI image in there. If there is one, and we can load it, put it into our image property. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's exactly right, yeah. <laughs> so hungry. So step one, we're gonna ask our picker to dismiss itself. We'll say picker, dismiss. Animated, true. Slide away nicely. <laughs> I do see you. I do see you. All right, come on then. Come on then. That nose. How can I say no to that nose? That's it though. Really, honestly, it's late for you. Next up, uh, can we read what's called an item provider from here? Because you don't just get the finished UI image. You get a provider, which you can read a URL from or read the data from. It's called an item provider. So we'll say guard let provider equals our results dot first dot item provider. And if we can't read the first item provider, 
there's nothing we can do, right? They probably press cancel, just bail out straight away. But if we're here, now we can start thinking about the data. Can this thing load a UI image for us? We can say if provider dot can load object of class UI image dot self. So if this thing can give us a UI image, great. We then call provider dot load object of class. So give me a UI image, please. Like that. Please give me the image and it'll say image and underscore in, in case we get an error through. We don't care about it here, we're dismissing anyway. If we get an error, we couldn't load it. Nothing to worry about. We can now say self.parent.image equals our image. But, but, that code won't be happy. And it'll be happy for a useless reason because, you know, X code. Um, when we say, can you load some kind of object, right? Yes or no. Then try and load the object, yes or no. Um, this thing is flexible. Like the image with type we're asking for is flexible. It wasn't really written with the kind of generics we have in modern Swift. And so this thing coming in could be basically anything at all. It could be a live photo, could be a movie, whatever. Now, obviously we have uh, told this thing somewhere down here, we only want images, but that doesn't filter through to this function call. It doesn't know that's actually gonna be a UI image despite us saying very clearly up here, UI image. And so, because it's actually optional, we can, <laughs> so hungry, we can just say, uh, do a gentle type conversion, uh, attempt a type conversion here to UI image. And if that fails, it'll return nil, which is not a problem for us. Fine, it's nil. They couldn't load the image, just like having an error. It didn't work, just bail out. Whew. Okay, so we need this typecast here because it could be anything at all, make sure it's safe. Now at this point, <laughs> I bet you're probably missing the beautiful simplicity of SwiftUI. You're having no more treats, no, clear off. Um, so you'll be glad to know we are actually done with Image Picker now. It's everything we need is already there. So now with that in place, we can go back to Content View and adjust the way it's used. So we already have our image, optional image here, plus our sheet to show that, uh, a boolean show a sheet or not. But now when we present the sheet, we've got to bind this thing to the correct data. Now remember, this thing expects to be bound to a UI image. This image here is the one we're gonna show, but we want to bind it to be a UI image so we can read the pixel data and transform it with core data somehow. And so we're gonna add another property up here. At state private var, input image is a UI image question mark. So read the UI image that we're binding to this thing. And now down here, We'll see our image picker is bound to the image of our dollar input image. Pass that binding in. So now that will read and write the UI image into that local at state property. What remains now is to uh, detect changes for that and respond to it somehow. In this case, convert the UI image into a Swift UI image we can render onto the screen. Now remember, we can't use a property observer here. We can't just say did set, it's a binding and Swift UI will ignore changes to the binding when done like this. So instead we're gonna write a method uh, that will uh, check whether input image has a value or not. If it does, it'll put it into a new image view inside that property. So we'll say down here, func load image, guard let input image equals input image, else return. Let's just get rid of this line breaks because I think that one line is like that, I refer on a single line. And below that, image equals the image with a UI image of input image, like that. And now we can add our final bit of code, an on change modifier, watching input image. We'll ignore the new value coming in and just call load image straight away, because that will read our input image from there. And with that, we should be done. So hopefully go ahead and run the app now and try it out. I should put a this button here. Browse to your photo library. This is Apple's, Apple's sample photos. They're not perfect. They're a bit odd. This one here is rotated slightly, for example. Um, but this one here should work just great. I'll select that. Boom. In it comes. It slides away neatly. The image is shown below. Um, great. It all works. Now, I realize you are probably sick of UI kit and coordinates at this point. But before we move on, I just want to summarize just briefly the whole process. We made a Swift UI 
struct up here that conforms to UI view controller representable. That makes a view that can go inside SwiftUI alongside text and images and sliders and so forth. We gave this thing inside here. I do see you, dog. I do see you. A make view controller, a make UI view controller. All right, one last one. Method, right? That understands how to make a view controller. I made it return a P you, you as well. Come on, man. We made it return, come on then, a PH picker view controller. Sorry, I'm sorry for the dogs. I know they're interrupting me quite a lot. Sorry. Inside there, we added our coordinator to act as a delegate for the picker view controller. And we told it to use that for its delegate, that coordinator, to act as a bridge between view controller and SwiftUI. We then gave that coordinator this did finish picking implementation that's called when an image is selected or we press cancel. It's called automatically by iOS because it's a delegate. It goes, here you go, what do you want to do? And finally, we gave our whole image picker this binding so it can send changes back to the main SwiftUI view. For what it's worth, honestly, once you've done coordinators once or twice, all the subsequent times are straightforward. You add your coordinator, you add a make UI view controller, update UI controller, da, 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 da. I wouldn't blame you if you found the whole thing quite baffling for now, but don't worry too much. We're gonna come back to this again in the future and you'll see it again and again in more SwiftUI projects for the future, wrapping up all these old UI kit things for use in SwiftUI. But it's, it's done now. And we're gonna use this again, you know, we have more enough time to practice, but keep this file around. This whole image picker thing, we're gonna use this in our final project. This is great for this project, but it's also another useful SwiftUI component you can use in other projects too.